Bulo Finaka, my name is Menka Gaunden, and I work as the Executive Director for the Women's Fund Fiji. I'm also here today as the Program Advisory Committee um, Rep for Aero. Last year, Aero released the Aeros for Change publication uh, on climate justice in Planet A. As part of that publication, I contributed a piece on the struggles of the people of the Moana. The people of the Moana, and Moana which means the ocean in many Pacific Island languages, uh, talks about the people of the Pacific. The Pacific is the largest body of ocean in the world. And here in the Pacific, climate change is rampant. In fact, Pacific Island countries have contributed least to greenhouse gases, but face the most wrath of climate-induced disasters each year. The most damage to the, e to the ecosystem and to the stratosphere and space is within the zone of the Pacific Ocean that is increasing heat waves and increasing the temperatures rapidly around the Pacific Ocean. This has resulted in sea level rise for many Pacific Island countries. Small Pacific Island countries like Nauru and Tuvalu are at the brink of being fully dispersed or fully immersed rather in the ocean. We heard very painful experiences of Pacific Island uh, countries and Pacific Island people during various COP processes. But there has been still very little done or heard about the women's experiences and girls' experiences and gender and conforming people's experiences in the Pacific. Pacific women have been um, in the forefront of climate justice since the time of nuclear testing in the Pacific in the early 80s and 90s. Um, Pacific women have led the conversation around climate and environmental justice in the Pacific. We still see though that women's experiences are not as highlighted when it comes to climate justice work. We have been systemically subtracted from conversations um, and policy making around climate justice. Many Pacific Island countries are moving towards efforts around climate policies, but are they taking into account women's sentiments and women's lived experience is another question. Although gender equality work has been severely invested in the Pacific, whether these changes are long term given the climate change that we are seeing is also questionable. For example, Women's Fund Fiji works with Neta Siri Women in Dairy, which is a uh, group of women dairy farmers in the highlands of Neta Siri, located in the main island of Viti Levu in Fiji. They are working on a women's economic empowerment project, whereby the yield that they will get is from the sale of milk that they will do the, to the Fiji Dairy Cooperatives Limited. Although currently we are seeing steadily the increase of the milk that they yield and are able to sell to FCDL, this may not be the case in the long term. Because of rising temperatures, pastures may not be as available to these women dairy farmers as they are right now. Warming climate also means l lower levels of lactation for cows. So in the future, say in the next 20 to 25 years, we will rapidly, we will gradually rather see a decrease of yield of milk. So this development that we are doing, a women's economic empowerment project that we are doing with Nature City Women in Dairy, is its sustainability and the profit that the women are making is in question because of climate induced calamities that we have in the Pacific at the moment. The other is we are also working with Women in Fisheries Network. It's a network of women fisher folks and women who are invested in aquaculture and maritime culture. So 
fish stocks are declining because of the increase in temperatures of sea water or also because of the changes in the patterns of climate um, warmer sea levels higher sea surges um, swell erosion um, and also uh, lack of uh, coral um, cultivation etc because of warmer sea levels bleaching of coral because of warmer sea levels is uh, impacting the way the sea ecosystem the marine ecosystem is behaving and affecting fish and livelihood stocks so for these women as well who are invested in this particular sector it climate change is also an alarming issue and is a livelihood issue for them so no matter how much of marine protected environment or marine protected programs that we have or livelihood fish stock fish stock rather programs that we have in the long run because of the climate induced disasters that is beyond the control of pacific island countries is going to impact the work that these women are trying to do as part of the women in fisheries network now that's speaking on the long term in terms of sustainability and in terms of economics around uh, climate induced disasters let's speak shorter term in terms of the rampant climate induced disasters that we are seeing in the pacific climate events like tropical cyclones have become more uh, it have increased in frequency and have also increased in intensity in the past 5 years we have seen cyclone pam cyclone uh, winston yasa who have done a lot of damage to pacific island countries like vanuatu and fiji during these we have not only seen millions of dollars worth of infrastructure damage but also damage to the economy there has been also damage to the way people live for example fund the women's fund fiji's grantee partner rise beyond the reef post tropical cyclone yasa in 2020 in the height of covid-19 by the way was um working with the community in the second large island vanualevu in the province of bua called dongea village they helped them construct homes uh, of the, the homes that that were destroyed during the tropical cyclone yasa so during this period it was realized that the current grounds that their village is constructed on may not be sustainable for future disasters now we hearing in 2022 that the village is earmarked for moving by the fijian government when a village or a settlement moves there is A, a great pressure on women and girls women are traditionally seen as food gatherers and as providers uh, of care to the family so if you're moving you're moving away from your traditional food sources from your traditional water sources um, and also your traditional farm sources and and spaces of living and livelihoods so for women to move and adjust in a new place may mean a whole deal of different level of living we've also heard this from um, a community called vunindongoloa which has been the first community in the world to relocate because of climate change and climate in these disasters um recently women in fisheries network has started working with the women of vunindongoloa uh, in terms of the way that they're living and how they're living around uh, the community and what the moving has meant for them they've now settled in their new um area that they have uh, uphill which where they are now living away from the coastal village that they were um and the only way of life that they known their entire lives and for generations was around coasts now they are uphill so for them the entire structure of living has changed so for women who used to probably go to the ocean and fish and gather food around the coast now means that now they have to learn about agriculture and about food food source practices around a around a forest in a more mountainous area this is a whole block of adjustment that the women are making these women previously were part of the women in fisheries network because they were earning from the coast around them living uphill means that now they have to come down and spend time invest time in travel 
coming and going from the coastal area um, so that they're able to access their uh, livelihood source, which is the ocean. So even moving people is not as simple as we think it is. And it doesn't really solve prob uh, a whole lot of problems. In fact, it creates a new level of problems for these communities. Whilst we're speaking about all this, the simple thing in this is that the Pacific continues to be the smallest contributor to greenhouse gases in the world. Through all these global uh, interactions that we're having, like the COP meetings, are we still making any great impact on the lives of those who are living in the community and grassroot level? Those that are actually impacted by climate change. Their entire livelihoods, their ancestral um, knowledge, etc., are being lost through climate change. How are we mitigating those? Are we, how are we controlling the loss and damage that is being done by climate change in the Pacific region? Um, how are we compensating? Not that there is any compensation to losing traditional burial grounds or to losing traditional knowledge or even connection with your own land, but how is that being done to Pacific Island people, particularly to women and girls? Because we live in a patriarchal society. So how is that loss and damage being also um, talked about from the analysis and perspective of women and girls? Um, we, this also poses a whole range of SRHR issues as well. Access to clean, safe water sources, um, access to quality health care. If we are moving settlements in, inland for communities and for countries like Fiji, whose road infrastructure is mainly focused on coastal areas or around the coastal areas, what does moving communities inland away from the coast mean? Are they being cut off from vital access to services, like for pregnant women accessing um, health care, or divisional hospitals for that instance, for girls accessing school? So these are also things at play that we oftentimes do not consider when we talk about this uh, climate displaced peoples or climate induced migration. So that is some of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, um, which you can read further information about in the um, Protecting the Moana piece, um, written on the Arrows for Change publication. Uh, also, the Women's Fund Fiji website provides uh, blogs that have also examples of lived experience of women and girls in and around Fiji, um, and also just wishing that you know we're able to raise our voices as women and girls of the Moana to um, increase our lobby and advocacy efforts around how we are talking about loss and damage for women and girls around the Pacific on climate change. Vinaka Vakalevu, Dhanewad, and thank you.